welcome back. My guest in this segment is going to be a dip bit different. I have Greg Engel, who's the CEO from Organogram Holdings, OGI on the TSX Venture. And I have Kevin Chen, who's the CEO of Hyacinth Biologicals, Inc., who is the recipient of an investment from Organogram. So, Greg, let's start with you. What is the nature uh, of the investment, uh, and what's the strategy behind it? Yeah, so we've been uh, interested in Hyacinth for over a year, and certainly met Kevin and his team, and have visited each other's sites and really looked at the technology that they're bringing. So at the end of the day, this is a technology um, that's really disruptive in terms of it could, the impact it could have in the marketplace because um, it's infinitely scalable, and Kevin can certainly go into more details, but uh, allows Hyacinth to produce cannabinoids um, using yeast and then converting a precursor molecule using proprietary enzymes and uh, ultimately gets a pure THC or CBD at the end of the process. And so from an organogram perspective, uh, we're excited about investing in Hyacinth for two reasons. One is we see this as the future of cannabinoid production. Uh, and while we're a major indoor producer, we feel there's always going to be a place for a large premium indoor grown flower. But we know that on the other side, as we move into vaporizable products and edibles and beverages that, and pharmaceuticals, we, you know, this is will provide us access and provide us an investment in a company that can provide that pure uh, cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. And so the second part, though, is you know we see uh, this as you know not only the future of the cannabinoid industry, but uh, you know in terms of major cannabinoids, but there will be developing as well kind of minor, minor cannabinoids. So from a pharmaceutical medical perspective, as they develop minor cannabinoids as well, can come up with unique formulations and mixtures from a medical perspective. So it's really exciting for us, and so we've invested. $5 million is a commitment to invest up to 10. Um, so the initial tranche is $5 million. Uh, and then the next two tranches of two and a half are both uh, milestone related. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you, Kevin, how far are you away from producing at commercial scale quantities of specific CB, micro CBDs and THC isolates? Yeah, we're looking at 12 to 18 months and most of this like tranche of funding is gonna go towards those facilities or towards contract manufacturing and uh, really transitioning us from like the R&D kind of scale that we're at now into some large scale production that we can, can show mm. and then we go up from there. What kind of numbers do you think you'll be producing at the outset in terms of volume of milligrams of CBDs or how would you yeah. categorize that? Uh, yeah, we'd be kind of in the range of a few kilograms per month starting out, uh, but that could vary depending on how the next like few months and year play out for us. Uh, if we get, um, and this is sort of you know what we're looking for now is know, attracting more people towards this mission of like, let's find new ways to produce these cannabinoids and let's create scalable solutions. Um, and the more that we can gather around us, the bigger kind of facility we'll build mm -hmm. um, and the, the quicker we'll, we'll scale up. So I assume you're a bioscientist by background? <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell, tell me about how you came up with this, this process, this idea, like how did this, how did we spend so much time building greenhouses if this was here all along? <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's uh, coming from like, myself and my co-founder's passion for genetic engineering and for, for biotechnology, where we're always thinking of you know, new ways to use our scientific skills to solve problems in the world. And so um, for a period of time, we were, all, uh, we were all studying at the time, I guess, when we first met and um, started thinking about startups and ideas and, and problems that exist out there. And uh, uh, we all had this kind of skill set of engineering yeast to make stuff. Um, mm. And then it's the question is like, what do we make? And there we had a whole list of different kinds of things, ranging from like flavors to fragrances to pharmaceuticals, and including cannabinoids. Um, and that's when we saw like the opportunity uh, come out and take form. And, and it's you know the industry itself has taken form a lot over the past four years since we started. And so uh, I think we made the right kind of choice earlier on, mm -hmm. uh, even though the industry was still kind of in its nascent stages when uh, when we first had the idea. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it all all, all came about. Hmm. Interesting. And so uh, at what stage did you become interested in this? Like, how did you hear about it? And how did you come to be like, what st strikes me as a pretty, you know, quick, uh, <laughs> quick move to get get positioned in there? Yeah, I mean, so certainly, um, you know, for myself, prior to joining the pharmaceutical industry, I've got biotech experience and pharmaceutical experience and consumer packaged goods experience. So, um, you know, before I came into the cannabis industry, that was my background. So, uh, as soon as one of our team members saw Kevin uh, present and started talking, to, we started talking to a couple members of his team. 
I could see what potential this had, right? This is really a disruptive technology where, you know, when Kevin mentions, you know, producing initially kind of a few kilos per month, that's kilos of pure cannabinoid, right? So when they can do it on pennies on the dollar versus what it's going to cost, um, you know, for plant-based, extract-based products. So, you know, again, it's infinitely scalable. And, and you know, we know globally, um, you know, more than 50% of the world's insulin is produced this way, a number of vitamins are produced this way. So, you know, it's a com incredible opportunity. And, and, you know, meeting with Kevin and the other founders, as well as their scientific advisory team members, um, you know, they have a strong background and a commitment to make this happen. And what they've proven to date uh, is really, you know, they've been producing THC and CBD and CBG to date, and it's all about now scaling up and optimizing that process. So, um, you know, this is such a great potential for us as a company and as an investment, and also to partner with an incredible group of scientists that have, you know, basically cracked the nut on this and, mm -hmm. and are ready to go to commercial production. I guess it's safe to say that the greater future for the medical side of these micro CBDs and their Un, as yet somewhat unknown medical properties is that the, with all the research that will now pour into them, there's going to be, I mean, I look, I just look at what happened with the ele epileptral drug that was approved by, by the FDA, and if that's just the first of an avalanche, I mean, that's going to be incredible. Yeah, I mean, the potential is really unlimited here, and I think that's one of the challenges in terms of going to a pharmaceutical-like product uh, with an API or active pharmaceutical ingredient is that you know, coming up with a pure form of THCB or um, other minor cannabinoids is challenging from plant-based, but if you're doing it in an isolate-based situation here where you're able to, you know, create it from scratch and create a pure form, I think that's where Kevin and his team um, can really help, you know, not only develop those products, but we can partner to develop some of the indications for use of those products. So it really is kind of two buckets here, right? The pharmaceutical use and the, and the recreational use. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so is it is it your intention to eventually become a publicly traded company, or is it far too early to have that conversation? Uh, I mean, it's a conversation that we've since we started the company. It's like, where do we go after you know this all shakes out, uh, and and definitely becoming a public company is, is one of the options on the table. Mm -hmm. um, but there's there's plenty of other stuff happening in the industry of you know as we've seen that you know we'll see where where we end up. But I mean, for from our perspective and from my perspective, it's like you know we're we're a bunch of scientists. We're focusing on making this product. We're going to be like you know laser targeted on that for the next uh, six to twelve months, and then we'll go from there. Hmm. All right, that's uh, very interesting. So, Greg, does this have any sort of implications for your thinking in terms of building out the multi-level, incredibly productive <laughs> greenhouse space that you have? Uh, yeah, so our, our indoor production facility, and you've seen in our last NDA, and I spoke about it last time I was on, was you know we're already with a premium indoor grown product, we're one of the lowest cost producers in the space, which is unique because that goes against the grain of what people have thought. So we know there's always going to be a place for a premium indoor high quality flower, right? So um, where I think this is a disruptive technology to displace is as you talk about, um, you know, some of that lower quality product that would be produced and then turned into extracts. And, you know, I think for us, it positions us very well for, um, you know, working with a potential strategic partner in terms of, you know, beverage development or other areas or pharmaceutical development, because now um, we have an access to, you know, part of the offtake um, from Hyacinth and we've invested in them. So it's a kind of a very unique partnership that really allows us to leverage it into kind of what's next for the company. But there's always going to be a place for premium indoor grow own product and that's, you know, we're committed to doing that because, um, you know, even this will displace, um, you know, derivative based uh, growth, but at the end of the day, it's never gonna replace for the cannabis connoisseur who's looking for that, you know, high end product. Mm -hmm. And so is there much of a premium on being able to produce these, you know, 100% uh, potency ingredients? Would, is there going to be a price premium for having those ingredients in different products like beverages and candies and whatnot? Uh, not necessarily, and, and overall, uh, fermentation is kind of this well-established, scalable technology, so efficiency-wise, like, we'll get down to cost points that are going to be lower than what it costs to grow plants. Hmm. Um, and, uh, but premium-wise, there's also opportunities, you know, within, um, uh, that, that starts to show up when you start thinking about pharma the pharmaceutical industry, where mm -hmm. there is like this high, super high quality GMP stuff that they have to make, and there's going to be consistency requirements there, um, and that's uh, that's where you see some different kind of price ranges that we would be selling a product for. So while we will we'll be able to make the efficiency of competing with like uh, if you were to extract purified cannabinoids from a plant, um, 
we're still going to be also looking for opportunities where we can make that much bigger premium in like the pharmaceuticals kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'd maybe add to that, James. When you look at um, you know the recreational market, um, having a pure form as a starting place to develop your platform of products um, is a very unique position because even with the most optimal conditions through the current extraction methodologies, you know you're getting somewhere between a 60 and 80 percent, um, you know, is THC or CBD. Um, so you've got a minor, a number, now some of those may be beneficial, but you've also got other byproducts that are in there of the process. So having a pure form does allow you to, to deliver and create a pure product at the end of the day, which I think is critical, whatever that uh, mechanism of delivery is, whether or not it's for adult recreational use or for pharmaceutical use. Right, but especially for a pharmaceutical grade product. Um, okay, well that's really fascinating, guys. Let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you. I want to see some of this. <laughs> this product in a vial or a vessel so I can touch it and feel it. But it sounds very intriguing. And Greg, of course, we're going to continue to follow the organogram story. Thanks for joining me today. Great. Thanks for having us, James. Yeah.